What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier at LeanX.com. Today we're gonna to talk all about the best dumbbell bicep exercises for you. Now I've put together a video in the past where I selected exercises for the biceps with dumbbells, but they were based on your training goal, whether it be hypertrophy, power, or strength, or even just a corrective exercise, but this is different. A lot of guys ask me, Jeff, you're the science guy, let's put the science into our selections. So we're gonna do that anatomically and functionally. If you look at the biceps here, you see we have two heads. The purple area here, the short head on the inside. Black area on the outside here, the long head, more responsible for the peak. We have the brachialis that sits underneath here, which provides some width to the bicep. And then we have the one that we don't want to forget either, which is the brachioradialis that also has some attachments as it crosses the elbow. So what would the best exercises be for those? That's what we're going to do here in this series, guys. One by one, area by area, exercise by exercise. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the long head of the biceps, and again, that's that outer portion here that is responsible for the peak and the height of the biceps. And the two things that you want to look for in your exercises is that either it's placing your arm back behind your body, or that the outside portion of the arm is more visible when you perform the exercise. If we talk about the anatomic position of the elbow behind the body, what that's doing is it's placing a greater stretch on the long head because of its attachment in the shoulder joint. So as we get back behind the body, we get more of a stretch and get better recruitment of the long head. The other aspect that I mentioned was the outer portion being more visible. Well, what you're seeing is what you're training when it comes to the biceps. If I see more of the outside of the arm when I'm doing an exercise, then we're going to be training more of the lateral outside head of the biceps. So that being said, guys, let's start breaking down the exercises that are best here for the long head. All right, so the first exercise up here is the classic dumbbell drag curl. And as you can see, it gives us that great opportunity to get the elbow back behind our body and to keep the dumbbell close throughout by simply dragging it up our body. The goal here is to make sure that the elbow never drifts out in front of you, right? Keep it all the way back as far as you can and try to get that dumbbell as close to your shoulder at the top as you can. It's going to feel like a tight squeeze, but that's what we're going here for, guys. A good contraction with a focused effort on the lateral outside head of the biceps. All right, so the second exercise here is actually the dumbbell incline curl, and it's going to ensure that you do it right because the bench itself is going to put your body in the right position to make sure you do. See, if I lean back here into the bench and I just let my arm hang down, you can see that right away, relative to my torso, my shoulder here is into extension, taking care of that prerequisite of having the arm behind the body for better long head recruitment. But from here, I can also do something else. If I want to enhance the stretch, I've shown you guys before, I could just contract the triceps at the bottom to reciprocally inhibit the biceps momentarily to get a better stretch and then rebound more forcefully out of that bottom position for a better contraction. Either way, it's the bench itself that's putting you in the position to succeed here. Just make sure you don't forget to include it when you're trying to hit that long head of the biceps. <laughs> Exercise number three here gives us an opportunity to hit the long head of the biceps with a little bit more weight because we can actually perform something a little bit more compound in nature and it's called the row curl. So what we do is we have a pair of heavier dumbbells and we actually place them next to our feet with our feet here close together. And what we're trying to do is initiate what we call a dead row, but we take over halfway, not by simply pulling the dumbbells up with a rowing motion, but pulling them up more with a curling motion. But as we've seen here now in these three exercises, the position of the elbow in relation to the body is the same. It's still back behind the body as we perform the exercise, allowing us to better hit that long head of the biceps. Remember, heavy barbell curls are not the only weapon in your arsenal when you're trying to train your biceps heavier. Your dumbbells can do the same thing, and this exercise here gives us a chance to do that while at the same time more effectively hitting the long head of the biceps. The last exercise for the long head of the biceps is called the dumbbell waiter's curl. Now I've covered this one before. In fact, it was Jesse's favorite exercise and the only one he did for his biceps for 30 days. If you want to get gains from this exercise, you can do them, but you've got to now focus on the other thing I told you about, and that is what portion of your biceps is visible when you're doing it. If you do this right, you're going to see more of the outer portion of your biceps because this is a long head exercise designed to help build bigger bicep peaks. The goal is to simply keep that top portion of the dumbbell flat, parallel to the ceiling and the floor throughout the entire exercise. You're simply lifting it straight up and straight down. In order to be able to do this, you're going to want to make sure that you bend your wrist backwards as you come up. This is going to minimize the contribution of the forearms from taking over and dominating the movement and placing all that stress on the biceps at the place where it matters the most at peak contraction right up at the top. If you don't feel like your biceps are going to absolutely pop at the top of this exercise, then you're not doing something right. 
aim for that squeeze, that uncomfortable squeeze, and I'll tell you, that's where the real gains are had. So when it's the inside of the biceps you want to train more effectively and build more width on the arm, then the short head of the biceps should be in your sights. The way to do that is not just to choose exercises that allow you to more visibly see it like we talked about, but you also want to make sure you can maximally contract it. And to do that, you have to pay attention to the three functions of the bicep. It's not just flexing the elbow and supinating the forearm, but it also has the ability to place that shoulder into greater flexion. If we can choose exercises that do at least two of these three things while also revealing that inside portion of the bicep, then we're going to have some winners. So with that being said, here's the exercises. One of my favorite ways to hit the inside portion of the biceps is with a simple standing dumbbell curl. But we can do something different here to more effectively overload that second component we mentioned, and that is supination of the forearm. See, if we offset the dumbbell in our hands this way, up closer to our thumb, then what this wants to do is pull us down into pronation. Well, we can see that when I perform the exercise, I'm not just curling the dumbbell up by flexing the elbow, but I actually have to overcome that tilted dumbbell, that downward force into pronation, by actually supinating. So I'm getting more resistance into supination, more effectively hitting that short head of the biceps. The next exercise here for the bicep short head is called the dumbbell spider curl. And we're using the bench once again to our advantage, but this time, instead of laying our back against it, we're laying our chest against it. Because what we're doing is we're placing our arm in a position where we maximize those three positions that we talked about. We're getting resisted elbow flexion, we're getting resisted supination, and because the shoulder is out in front of our body and elevated into slight flexion, we're getting an overloaded bicep contraction in shoulder flexion. So we're hitting all three components. If we were doing a regular curl and standing upright, we would actually lose some of the tension on the biceps at the top. Not with the spider curl, we're actually shifting that peak tension away from the mid-range and placing it on the biceps in its most contracted state. This right here is a way to get great gains and to direct them most effectively at that inner short head of the biceps. Which brings us to our third exercise here for the short head, and that is the biceps preacher curl. And once again, it's the bench that's coming in and setting you up for success here because it's getting your arm out in front of your body, and it's also eliminating the momentum that you might get from swinging your arms back and forth. When you perform the exercise here, though, there's one thing I want you to focus on, and that is the target of the dumbbell. Where is it heading towards? You don't want it to come across your body and head towards your chest. What you want to do is at least bring it up towards your shoulder, or even better, more to the outside of your shoulder because to better hit the short head, we want to have more visibility of that short head. If I were to close it down, you wouldn't see it. If I were to open it up, you would. This is where you're going to be able to hit that area more effectively if you do this exercise properly. Next up is an exercise that you probably have never done before, but it's actually just a variation on a seated dumbbell curl. But instead of letting the dumbbells hang down to start, we actually start them right here from our lap. And what this does is it effectively removes some of the contribution of the brachialis and the brachioradialis, which we're going to get to in a minute, and it places more of the emphasis on the biceps as a whole. What we are getting here is that overload on the elbow flexion, the supination, and at the top here, the opportunity to do that extra, right? That shoulder flexion. So we initiate without momentum from the thighs, and we get it to the top, and then get that extra little press, once again driving those elbows out in front of our body, and more effectively hitting that short head. Which brings us to our final exercise here for the short head, and that is the no money curl. You might be asking, where does it get its name from? So as you see me do the exercise, you can see that I am getting that clear and visible activation here of the short head of the biceps. But more importantly, for me, I also like the fact that I'm getting some good external rotation at the shoulder. You can never get enough external rotation, and this curl is one that actually reinforces good and proper posture. You can't go wrong when a curl is also reinforcing good posture. This is one of my favorites. We throw out this video now to bring you some miscellaneous exercises. Not necessarily geared towards more of the long head or the short head activation, but just good selections that are based on controlling or taking advantage of momentum. The first of these miscellaneous exercises is one that I love, and it's called the dumbbell strict curl. And instead of using a bench to help us out here, we're using a wall to make sure we get this right. And you can see here that the goal is to take the momentum of a curl away. Now in some instances, as you're going to see soon, it's actually a great thing to take advantage of some momentum if we want to work a different aspect of the curl. But when we want to make sure that the biceps themselves are doing all the work and muscling us up on every repetition, then this is what you want to do. You take that momentum away by forcing your upper back and your butt to stay in contact with that wall throughout every single repetition. The urge is going to be to either bring your butt away from the wall to swing it, 
or to lean down and take your back away from the wall. Neither of them are allowed. You need to make sure that these are done in proper form and with the most precise control. And with that, it brings us to the evil twin of the strict curl, and that is the cheek curl or the eccentric curl. And you can see here that the goal is we're trading in all that control and precision for the overload we get eccentrically with a cheek curl. So I like to do two things here. Number one, I like to do one dumbbell at a time. We've discussed before that in a standing curl, if you lift two dumbbells together, that the exercise becomes infinitely harder and it's more difficult to lift heavier weight. Well, here we want to try to get as heavy a weight as we can actually lift so that we can overload the eccentric, knowing that we're stronger on the way down. I'm utilizing momentum and swing just to put it in position to give me that next eccentric rep. And from here, I want to slow it down and control it all the way down to the bottom. And last up in the miscellaneous category, it doesn't matter how you try to restrict me in terms of using only a dumbbell. I'm always going to find a way to do one of my favorite exercises for my biceps, and that is the weighted chin up. And that's exactly what we're doing here. I take a dog leash and I wrap it around the dumbbell like this. And then I simply wrap it to itself and then hang it around my waist. It's effectively a body weight version of a curl. But instead of curling a bar up, I'm curling my body up to the bar. But the other thing I like to do here too is something we just covered, and that is overloading the eccentric. And all I have to do is just step myself up to the bar and then fight that descent. Try to slow myself down as much as I can. If I get down to the ground, step myself back up again and repeat. Ultimately, I'm going to lose my body's ability to control myself on the way down, and when that happens, the exercise is over. But it does give us a chance to take away the type of stress that we're subjecting our biceps to with the dumbbell in an exercise combo that you might not have thought of before or even tried. Back to the areas of muscle focus here, guys. No bicep development is complete without the inclusion of exercises that target the brachialis. This muscle is the one that lies underneath the biceps and helps to create more of that width and girth in the size of your arm. So if you're looked at from the front, the width is going to be exactly where you want it to be. The exercises to get that done are the following. And we start here with the cross body hammer curl. And you can see that instead of just bringing the arms up directly in front of our body with a traditional hammer curl, we want to bring it across our body because by doing so, we have to pronate the forearm and face it down towards the ground. If the biceps is a supinator of the forearm, we can minimize the contribution of the biceps by getting into pronation. And once we do that, elbow flexion, the bending of the elbow, is going to be primarily driven by, again, in the beginning portion of the exercise mostly, by the brachialis. So this exercise here gives us the opportunity to work one side at a time, focus on getting that good contraction and squeeze of the brachialis beneath the biceps, and at the end of the day, help to build up the width and girth of that arm from any angle. Now if you want to go to the more traditional approach of bringing your arms up in front of your body in a more traditional hammer curl, then try this variation out instead. It's called the robot curl. But what we're trying to accomplish here is just to increase the tension that we apply to the brachialis in its most challenged position, at that midpoint of the range of motion. So we start with our arms in this position, and we simply lower one down, come all the way up through the curl, and stop it again in the mid-range. So while we were working the other arm, we were obviously still isometrically challenging the brachialis on the non-working arm. The idea here is it's the perfect complement to the crossbody hammer curl, and when it comes to dumbbell exercises, it's that slight variation that increases the time under tension that's going to give you just that added push you need to start seeing some new growth in your brachialis. And then we finally move our focus down the forearm a little bit and stop right here on the brachioradialis. This is another one of those muscles that you do not want to overlook if you're looking for maximum arm development. Just because it resides primarily in the forearm doesn't mean that it doesn't still contribute the visual effect that you're looking for when you're trying to develop bigger arms. And here the exercise of choice once again involves offsetting your grip, but this time with the pinky sliding closer to the end of the dumbbell to give us a better chance to target the brachioradialis. Because we know as we bend our elbow up, we can actually more favorably overload that pronation that the brachioradialis is trying to accomplish. And by shifting that pinky down towards the end there, we're getting that offset load that helps us do exactly that. At the top, we want to squeeze as hard as we possibly can. Make sure you're doing these each and every repetition under control, really trying to force the bulk of the work right here into this portion of the forearm. If you do this exercise properly, you should actually see the muscles stand out at attention and pop up. You know, just sort of to remind you that it's actually doing all the work. So there you have it, guys. The best dumbbell exercises for your biceps. Hey, hey, whoa, oh. what are you doing? It's oh. my part. Oh, you know, I just wanted to kind of show off my biceps. Pew! Pew! Oh. Pew!
So there you have it, guys. The best dumbbell exercise is based on the area it is that you're trying to focus on and improve. And if you're looking for more of these videos and you find them helpful, make sure you leave your comments below. Let me know also what I'm going to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step plan where we put the science into all the programs that we do, they're all over at athenex.com. And if you haven't already done so, guys, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys. See you soon.